Hey guys, what is going on? It's GH Games here, back with another fantastic tutorial. This time it's a Maya Basics. Now this one, we're going to be using Maya 2017, Photoshop CS5, and of course UE4. So what we'll do today is we'll be creating an alpha, and using an alpha in UE4, but today we're going to mess around with a fence. Uh, you can actually use this for... Anything you want to use alphas for, so you know, like trees, fences, uh, windows, if you want to put window panes in, all sorts of kind of stuff. But today we'll be creating a fence, so all we need, really, uh, in Maya, is to use a simple plane. Uh, so we'll sort the grid size out, we'll go to display and grid, use the little square box, and make sure it's 500 by 500 by 10, and apply that, done. We have did that in a couple of the tutorials. Now let's get a little plane on the go. So we'll go create polygon primitives and we'll create a plane. Uh, I'm just having a look if there was actually a plane on the, uh, the bar there, but there wasn't. So you can see the little plane there. We're just going to drag all that out and make sure it's actually there, which it is. Fantastic stuff. And we'll go into the polyplane one and just change the subdivs of height and weight down to one. Beautiful, beautiful. Now let's move this and we need to just like use the pivot. So what we're going to do is we move this and move the pivot by just pressing insert, holding X and put it into the corner. And we need to center it as well. So the center should be just on the top. There's a little arrow key um, just on the top, uh, that which you, you'll be able to, I tried my very best, but it's just there at the top just there and let's go the x y and z on to zero 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 so it centers it out so when we do export it it'll export right in the middle and that's what we want so we're going to hold right click and get it to the vertex and drag out to each corner by holding x which is the magnet tool for the grid and let's just get all this up let's put that to minus 90 fantastic and that's pretty much done, so let's go and UV this out. So with it highlighted, let's go on. Oh, let's first save it, actually. It's probably better. Make sure you save constantly. So let's make sure you save it in somewhere where you can actually save it to. So for me, I save it to my YouTube, YouTube edits and my models. Make sure you have different uh, folders for each. And I just call it fence underscore tut through tutorial. So let's go into the UV editor. And it's actually UV'd now because it's just a plane. So what we'll do is go to UV and go to the planar mapping and use the square. And as you can see, it's project uh, project from the X axis, which is the red axis on Maya. So we'll just uh, apply and close and it is done. It was done in the first place, but it's always good to just project it properly. So the UVs will actually be there. So that's select the object and create image and create PSD network. And again, make sure you save this in a folder where you you can find always good name conventions for all your folders. So if you create a big scene, you know where everything is. That's vital because, oh my lord, I've had a problem. So let's save that as fence underscore tour underscore UV. Make sure it's set to 1024 by 1024. And let's just drag the coral across. We don't need any of the other nonsense. And let's just create that out. And that's pretty much it with Maya for the time being. So I'll just minimize all that and let's get onto Photoshop. Now the Photoshop is one of the, the, the most vital thing when you're creating alphas because you can't create your alphas without it. I mean, I don't know if you can, but I know I can't. So let's just open this up. Let's get the UVs up. It's already set to mine, but find where it is and open it. And that's where it is. So let's just mess around with the layers. Let's save this folder as albedo, which is just base color, just for name and convention sake. The snapshot is your wireframe and just the background color. And now that's it, that's, we just need to go and save out. Make sure you save it and go onto textures.com. This is quite vital, this is where you're gonna get texture from. Uh, make sure you sign in so you can actually use it. You need a login, but it only takes two seconds. But let's search for fence, and it should be just on the second row. This fence is the one you're gonna want for today. I'll put the link in the description. And make sure it is seamless as well. Uh, I've already checked that it is seamless and I've downloaded it. There it is. So we'll just, when it's downloaded, make sure you copy it and put it into uh, the same folder 
that your UV is in. So you can just get it up straight up in Photoshop, as you will be able to see now. Let's just open this, and there it is. Bang, done. There's your fence. Let's open that, and let's just highlight this, and Control c and Control v In it goes, plodding along. Let's rename this. Let's just minimize that down, rename it to wires, and make sure when you're using uh, minimizing stuff, making things, uh, scaling stuff, I should say, make sure you hold Shift down so it does a uniform scale, so otherwise it'll, it'll, it'll be wrong. <coughs> it won't scale properly. So just duplicate this out, holding Control and T to transform that, and press Enter to finish the transform. Again, let's highlight these two, duplicate them as well, press OK, and bang, these two go down again. Again, holding control, and, uh, control T and then shift down. Highlight all these, merge them all together because we know what we want here. And let's rename that back to wires and let's control T and hold shift, bring that up, bring that down. Make sure it's all in the wireframe and that looks good to me. Make sure it's like that. So you can see the little lines as well. These little lines here, are like little seams, but they won't really be noticeable in the alpha, so we can just leave this for the purpose of this tutorial. Uh, make sure we get the magic one tool out. Uh, make sure the tolerance is on 45 and highlight all this. And highlight all the little extra bits as well. There we are. And now what we can do, when this is all highlighted, we can make sure the color is white and create a new layer with this highlighted still. Create a new layer. Rename this white uh, to alpha because this will be our alpha uh, thing and press B for brush and just brush and just do the whole thing in, in white because alpha uh, reads white is full color it's black and black is empty. That's how alphas read. So once that's all colored in white, what we can do is we can press, uh, press control shift and I, which will invert it and change the color to black and then paint again because when it inverts it inverts the actual magic one so you can actually as you can see uh, the rest of it's black and once all that is done you can press Control and D which will deselect and that'll be your alpha so now we've got our albedo color which is our wires and we've also got our alpha as well so what we need to do now is make sure the wires selected this one file and save this one save it as make sure it's same folder you i've got it on my uv folder uh, save it as uh, a target that's very important for you for make sure it's as a target and just rename it to what you want i did name of conventions again so i did fence underscore top underscore albedo which is base color and i saved that to my uv4 folder so uh, all my materials and stuff i can save it to be four and just bang save it go on save it Fantastic. Now it'll come up with an extra option for your target options. Uh, 16, 24, or 32. Just leave it on default. It doesn't really matter for this tutorial. And make sure your alpha is selected and make sure you can see it as well. And save that again as, again, alpha. Save it as a target and save it in your UE4 folder or whatever folder you're using. It doesn't really matter as long as you know where it is. And let's just save that out. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So uh, make sure you save this one as well, just in case you need it for later. So we'll just, uh, one final, two steps really. So we need to open UE4, get that bad boy open. Again, if you don't know what UE4 is, link in the description, it'll send you to the download page. Brilliant engine, awesome stuff. Uh, but what we need now is to export our model so now we've got our textures and our alpha and we just need our model as well which we haven't exported so we will go and we will go and export that out let's we'll create a new project now as blank and we we'll might as well just rename it as well make sure this is in somewhere you can find as well or if it's on a project you already have you can open that project up as well you don't have to create a new one. I just call this fans on score tot and I just create. Fantastic stuff. And now I'm probably thinking, oh my lord, I need to export the model. Yep. 
So off I go. So make sure everything's highlighted. Again, make sure it's uh, zeroed out, which it should be anyway, since we've literally just created it. So, yep, yeah, let's make sure it's in object mode. Yep, make sure it's zero, zero, zero again at the top. And let's also, in the taskbar, it should be uh, non-deformer and non-history. And make sure you de uh, delete those two, what I just did there. Sorry, that wasn't so uh, um, clear. So let's go file export selection and a little box. Keep all that default. And again, save it. Create a new folder called models. Save it in there. My underscore fence underscore tut underscore FBX. Keep all the defaults the same because you don't need to change them. And export selection. Make sure it is in FBX. And that's done. You don't need Maya anymore. So let's just go into U4. Let's just get rid of all the, these assets. Not that one. Um, these assets that we don't need. The chairs and the table. That's all nonsense to us. And let's just tidy our workspace a bit. And what we need now is, again, we need folders. So uh, right click on the content and up at the top, new folder. Let's call this one models. And let's get another folder as well. And let's call that one textures. So let's just, let's first, let's import our, let's import our textures. So let's click import, go to where you saved your textures. Mine should be in the UE4 folder. And there we are, the fence alpha and the fence albedo. Let's grab both of those. So they're there, that's it. And the model, the only one model that we actually need is our fence model. There it is, there's the bad boy. Now let's just get rid of, don't don't have materials and textures checked. Leave them unchecked because we have them anyway. So you don't need them. So we also need one more folder as well which will be our materials folder because textures and materials are different. So let's uh, right click in there and go to material and let's rename this material to mat underscore fence because it's our material fence. And let's double click that. And this is our material page for our fence. So what we need first is to put our textures in there. So let's go into our textures uh, let's grab both of them. Let's fly these in. Just drag it, drag and drop. They all I need to do. Boom. Almost there. We're almost there. Make sure your base color and your alpha doesn't get mixed up. And let's uh, plug that into base color. So w there's one more thing we need to do as well. Because this, is, this isn't actually a opacity mask. We need the opacity mask. That one that's invisible. So let's select that. Go on to uh, blend mode and put it to masked. And let's make sure two-sided as well is also checked. So it goes through, you can see both sides of it as well. So if opacity max comes open, you can put your alpha straight into the white to white into opacity mask. And as you can see, the alpha has already taken effect and you can actually see through the model on both sides. We also need to put a bit of roughness on it as well. So we need to hold it down, hold your left click down and just press one or hold one and put left click. And let's put the value to one and put that right into roughness. Just so it's, it's not reflecting any light because we don't need that. And let's just save that or apply and save. You should really do. I just saved it by accident. You should really apply first, then save. And that's your material. So let's go into your model. Let's uh, go into your models. Double click on that bad boy. <clears throat> and when it actually eventually loads because you know my computer is awful there we are there's our model and it's uh in all it, it doesn't look like much now because that's just the plane but that is our model so in the top right you'll see the material so we need the material that we just created so let's go back to our material let's highlight it and the little arrow press it boom in it goes and that is the fence both sides Alfred and that is literally the simplest and easiest way to create alpha channels in the world um, obviously this is a very very basic model um, I'm just gonna mess around now and make sure it builds right and I'm just gonna scale uniform scale it down to fit um, 
this default layout just to showcase what it does. It is seamless. They go in together perfectly uh, from the other side as well. You know, it's it's really not that difficult. Really not that difficult. Let's just select both of these. And let's hold shift and control and bring these out. Let's hold A and bring these back together. There we go. So you can put them at 45 degree angles if you want. They're still seamless regardless. Up and down, side to side, back and forth, all seamless. So let's just build this. Now, um, your level of detail or LODs aren't going to be great for this because it's just a simple alpha. Um, that one error check is gone. There we go, done. So there's no errors for it. It's just sometimes the lighting, the default light doesn't go through, as you can see very well on the fence. But for purposes of simple alphas or creating anything with, with simple alphas, it, it does the job quite well. Um, that's a stupidly simple fence done probably in under 10 minutes without me faffing around. But let's also... I mean, you can do all sorts with this. You can create all sorts of... Uh, fun stuff. I haven't created many alpha things. I've just I've created a plant um, in my early days of university, and I've created this fence as well because I needed it as part of uh, one of my projects. Um, I'll just load one of them up now. I'll just show you what what you can what you can actually achieve with uh, these alphas. I mean, you don't necessarily have to do one big model with alphas. You can do one little, like, for example, a window frame. You could do a model of a window frame and then put the alpha as the window panes. Because, as I said before, with alphas, um, you know, white is block and full. As you can see, the plant's there, and that, that's, the, that's the fence. And black is empty. So, you know, you can put something as grey, and it'll just be barely visible, and that would be a window. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be black, white, it can be grey. And if it's grey, it, it's it's slightly opaque, it's not fully opaque, and that could be a window pane. So there is quite a lot you can do with that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, make sure to give me a like if you liked it, and subscribe if you really want to subscribe. And I will see you guys later.